Time is a very interesting concept. And when the Lord began to uh, deal with me on time, it was actually as early as the 1970s when I began to have somewhat of a fascination uh, for various time cycles, some of the more obvious ones in the book of Daniel and Revelation, like the 1260 days, the 1290, and the 1335, and so on. And some of these cycles have been known for a long, long time, and uh, uh, people have uh, often beaten them to death and uh, tortured them into saying many things that uh, were really not true. These cycles are not really understandable unless we see other time cycles as well. To really understand time, one almost has to have some knowledge of the meaning of numbers as well. Because when we talk about a time cycle in terms of so many days or so many years, that number has a meaning. There are many numbers that have meaning and uh, they have specific uses in the scripture. Most people uh, have heard of some of these numbers, like six being the number of man, and of course the infamous 666, uh, which uh, the book of Revelation says is the number of man or of a man, and uh, everyone associates that with the Antichrist. Uh, but it's a, it's a triple six, and so really it deals with man. You know, man was created on the sixth day and so on. But all these uh, other numbers as well, five being the number of grace, and you'll see this uh, all through scriptures, how it's used. Seven is a perfect number. Eight is new beginnings. Uh, You know, 10 is the law. 12 is a number of divine government. And each, each number has its own meaning. And if you have... Uh, If you have a good memory and can remember all of them, so much the better. But if not, uh, you may want to refer to one of the appendices in the back of Secrets of Time, where it gives uh, a two-column list of numbers and uh, gives the basic meaning. So when you run across these numbers in your Bible study, uh, these are clues as to what is really happening under the surface. Not everything is stated on the surface of the scripture. Sometimes you have to dig down uh, under the layer of the surface in order to find the meaning of these uh, of the statement. But if you know a little bit about the meaning of numbers, it will give you a clue as to what the scriptures are actually talking about. If you take this one step further, there is something called gematria, or Uh, the numeric value of each of the Hebrew and Greek letters of the scripture. I'm sure you've all heard of Roman numerals. You all had to learn those boring things in grade school or high school. Remember that? X is 10, V is 5. Well, the Roman numerals are fairly easy because the Romans only used six of their letters to indicate numbers. And then combinations of those uh, like 60 was the number, was LX. You know, L was 50 and X is 10, and so that is their way of writing number 60. But the Greeks and the Hebrews used all of their letters. They didn't just use six of them. They used all of them. So every letter in their language was also one of their numbers. They did not use the Arabic numerals that we do, do today. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. These are, uh, these are borrowed, and we, we got them actually in the, uh, in the 7th century, 7th and 8th century, uh, with the rise of, uh, of Islam, and, uh, and they, the Arabs that brought them into contact with Palestine and uh, the Eastern Roman Empire and so on. Uh, they found that those numbers were really much more convenient to be used than Roman numerals. Up to that point, they'd been Roman numerals uh, were, the, were the main thing, and everyone was using them. But then they found that this one, two, three, four, five stuff was uh, really much simpler and a whole lot easier to do math. Have you ever tried to do math using Roman numerals? It's pretty difficult, right? <coughs> we had to do a little bit in, in high school, I remember, and it drove us all bananas. 
so this was a, a very good innovation. In fact, they even brought in the number zero. Did you know they didn't use zero before the seventh century? At least not in Europe. They went from minus one to plus one, and that was just a one-step thing. But now, of course, we know that there's a zero, and so uh, it's two steps from minus one to plus one. And this made a big difference when you're dealing with dating. You know, you talk about uh, 100 years B.C. or 1 B.C. Well, did you know that from 1 B.C. to 1 A.D. is only one year and that there is no year zero? Not many people know that. But it's one of those little things that if you don't know that and you're trying to compute the number of years from King David, you know, 900 and some years before Christ, to today, you can take that minus number and subtract it from today's date, but then you got to deal with that one extra number, and you got to subtract one because there's no year zero. It's just one of those crazy little things that uh, people, if you don't realize, then you're going to be a year off all the time, uh, get a little confused. But that's the number zero. Well, when the Hebrews wrote the Old Testament in the Hebrew language, and when the Greek language was the language of the New Testament, you could take each of those words, each of those letters in the original language, and convert it to a number. So, for instance, the name Jesus in Greek is Jesus. And if you take each of the letters, convert them to numbers, and add them together, it totals 888 because he came for a new beginning. Uh, eight is new beginnings, you see. And so there's a whole new beginning, and it has to do with the character of the new covenant which, which Jesus brought in.